Hi, welcome to the breadboard. In this episode, we're going to have a look at the Raspberry Pi 400. I got this for Christmas as a present from my wife and kids, and I haven't had a chance to do a video yet, but now I'm going to. So, why am I doing this right now? Well, because we're about to engage on some educational Arduino programming and things like that. And I thought as Visual Studio Code and Arduino and everything else is all runnable on a Raspberry Pi, I thought that we would uh, do it using a Raspberry Pi and it would give us the benefit of having a relatively low cost computer for doing some development and things like that. So we're going to see how well it would work on here. Let's have a look inside, see what we've got. So this is how it comes. I got the one with the uh, power supply and all that other stuff. So let's just get it out of the box. No, it look, doesn't look like there's an easy way to get into it, but I might see if we can have a look inside. That will be kind of cool, I think. We've got, let's just cover up. A SD card adapter, HDMI lead, micro HDMI to regular HDMI. We have a power supply, USB Type C, because that's what this uses. Got it with the Pi mouse, just you know, why not? And it also comes with a Beginner's guide to how to use a new computer for the official Raspberry Pi. Um, I think it's got a lot of different examples for things in here. So we'll have a look at some of these as well over the coming months. Uh, not today. We're just going to set this thing up and get Visual Studio Code loaded. This is the Raspberry Pi color coordinated rodent. Raspberry Pi official power supply. Now this one is a USB type C and it is rated at three amps in this case. So that's all the parts that come with it. One thing I found useful is a little HDMI adapter um, so I can reach my computer screen when it's further away. Anyway, let's see if I can open this up before we take it, uh, uh, before we power it up. What is it Dave Jones says? Don't twitch it on, take it apart. Anyway, we'll see. Not sure how it comes apart. Hopefully it's just a click together thing. Okay, so I found some tabs at the back. Just running along with a plastic spudger. Looks like they're just clicking out. Trying not to break anything, of course. All right, so here's your main Pi. So we've got the transformer for the network adapter. We've got the regular USB, two USB threes, and then the USB-C, and then HDMI, and then the SD connector, and then the GPIO. So we'll find out what this is like. I'll just take these screws out. Be right back. Okay, that's the screws out. Need to. Zoom out just a little bit. Can fit it all in nicely. Now this cover should. There we go. Got it off carefully. It's a bit of a conductive sticky tape there. Well, there's our Raspberry Pi. So we've got our core processor, RAM. There's Probably the network interface would be here, USB controller, and looks like probably wireless controller over here. That's pretty much it. Oh, little tabs here, maybe. Oh, yeah, there we go. Never mind. Now we're getting somewhere. So, not a huge amount on the bottom. Nothing really much to write home about. Some Cache connections and things, and that's about it. So let's put this back together. So this all the keyboard just clicks back in all the way around. So there's really no serviceable parts or anything you can do in there. Think about the only reason you might want to go inside is if you 
accidentally dropped your SD card somehow in a wrong slot. I don't think it's easy to put in the wrong slot. Okay, so there we go for that. Let's um, see if we can get something going. Okay, I have not powered up this yet from putting a fresh SD card in. I downloaded the very latest Raspbian from raspberrypi.org website and I put it on a 16 gig card and it's in here. Never been powered up since that so we should be able to see the whole works happening with this Raspberry Pi 400. Um, I will probably speed up the video to five times because this could be a lengthy process while it goes through its initialization the first time. Then we're going to install Visual Studio Code and some add-ons to it, uh, namely Platform I.O. for doing Arduino programming. We'll install the Arduino IDE as well, because why not? And uh, put some, um, and then we'll be able to use some of the demo sketches that come with that. Um, we'll import them into Platform I.O. just to verify that they will work. I've got an Elegoo um, Uno R3 sitting here. And uh, ready to go. So let's power this up. I'm going to switch to the camera pointing at the Raspberry Pi screen because you're not going to see anything happening here. Maybe a light come on, but that'll be about it. So let's do that now. Let me just switch screens. It looks a bit weird. Cameras always pick up every slightest mark on the screen when it's... Uh... All right, I'm in the bottom right corner, but that's about it. Okay, let's plug her in now and see what happens. Okay. Power it up. And there we go. All right. Let me just verify everything is in focus here. And we'll continue. Okay, looks like everything's good to go. So we'll just run through this. Uh, as I said, I'm going to fast forward this so just be aware you'll pick whatever suitable for your country um, and time zone if you do have a black border which I do around the edge of the screen just check that box and hopefully when it reboots it should disappear because it will widen out to fit the screen. Yes, I have a long network SID and password. We'll come back to the video when it's done. I'm just going to, rather than time lapse this, there's no point. I'm going to just cut it out because it's just showing you the graph going across the screen there. That's all it's doing. So I'll come back as soon as it's done. Okay, we're done. So let's just click the OK and we will restart. It should just take a moment. And there we are. Okay, you have zoomed right back out again. Here's our default screen from Power Up. What we need to do now is install the Visual Studio Code from Microsoft and then Platform I.O. and the Arduino IDE. So to do that we need a terminal. So just click the terminal at the top. And here we are. I'll, I'll zoom into that so that you can see easier what I am doing. Okay, so first thing we need to do, is, we already did it, but I'm just going to do it again anyway because it's good if you're going to do this on another Pi that you had for a while, is we just type in sudo apt space update this will update the libraries and everything else if they need they should be theoretically already done because it just did one before I rebooted yeah so everything's up to date um, so next is sudo app apt install code and hit enter that's going to install Visual Studio code Okay, that's Visual Studio Code done. Now we'll do the same 
but for Arduino. And there we're done there. So now if we zoom out a little bit, just so we can see the full screen again, uh, that will do. So if we go up to the menu now, we should see under programming, we have right at the top here, the Arduino IDE. And near the bottom, we've got the blue logo for the Visual Studio Code. So first of all, let's just quickly try the standard blink sketch on my Arduino here. So we'll fire up the standard Arduino IDE and then we'll bring the blink and see if it will upload. So I'll plug in the Elgu Mars into my keyboard. Plug it into the USB 2 port. All right, so we're ready to go there. All right, let's fire up the Arduino IDE. Okay, so here we go. There we go. Okay, we'll do file and we'll open from the sketchbook, no, from example, sorry, basics blink. All right, so this time we'll go file, sorry, not file. We'll click the tick box to make sure it's going to compile okay for us. We do need to make sure we set the board correct first though. So it's an Arduino Uno right at the top. And um, serial port, yep, TTYACMO, it detected it. So we'll click verify. Should verify, no problem, of course. So now we'll click upload, and it should automatically upload to the Pi. I'll switch screen views to the Pi. It's already running a blink kind of sketch, but we should see it um, flicker. Right now it's running um, an, a sketch where it's blinking the LED, but it's blinking it for a very sh half a second on and two seconds off. It should go back to a one second on, one second off time with it, if it uploads correctly. So here we go. Now you can see that the sketch is flashing on and off at a nice even rate. So if we modify the sketch uh, here, so if we modify this to be, oh, I don't know, let's make it for half a second or 200 milliseconds, just make it run rapidly. All right, just to verify we are uploading quite happily and we'll click upload again. It'll recompile and then it should upload it. And if we go back to the Arduino, forgot to do that before it uploaded, but nevertheless, there it is flashing at a 200 millisecond cycle time on and off. So just under half a second between the two. So that shows that we've got the Arduino Uno working quite happily. So let's now go and try and do the same thing with the platform IO in Visual Studio Code. Of course, I have to install that first. I'm just going to save this modified one because it'll pull it into a um, location that I can find easily, which is under Sketchbooks under Pi. I'll we'll save it there. Um, what I'll also do, we'll get Platform IO up and running first. Um, but after that, we'll pull down the application for the robot car that we had and we'll see what issues there may or may not be with that too. So this time we're going to load Visual Studio Code. It may take a minute or two the first time it loads up. But it didn't. There we go. I'm going to back out a little bit because it is a bigger screen. And the first thing we want to do is load Platform IO into it. We'll also load the Marlin um, generator program as well while we're at it. But anyway, these little icons you see over here, just click those. And at the top, type in Platform. And it should find Platform IO. Just type in the full thing Platform IO. And there it is, it's up to version 2.3 as of time of doing the video. We'll click install. Shouldn't take very long to install. Got some messages down here saying um, help improve VS Code by allowing Microsoft blah blah blah. Let's close that message out for the moment. It's down, done downloading, now it's installing frameworks and things. Alright, that's done. So we'll reload the platform I.O. 
sorry, reload Visual Studio Code to make it take a hold. And there's our little alien face. Now the other one I want to put in is for Marlin. Just going to do this while we're at it. So I just type in Marlin. And it's the auto build Marlin that I want to put in. So we'll install that. So now it's installed. Okay, so what we want to be able to do is open an Arduino project. So let's just go and say open. This is under the platform I.O. menus. If this isn't showing, then just click the alien face here and it should load up. Now we're going to import an Arduino project. And we'll select the core, which is going to be Uno. So Arduino Uno. And we're going to look in Pi. And we should see sketchbook right there. And there's the blink sketch that we saved. So we'll import that. It's going to go through a few things while it's busy importing. What I like about Platform I.O. over Visual Studio, uh, over the Arduino IDE, is the fact that it's uh, really more of a true C programming environment and you can use it for so many different platforms. You know, you, I'm, we're using it here to compile what are effectively Arduino code, but you can use it for so many more things, including Windows applications, C Sharp, etc., etc. So it gives you one nice, consistent, free interface as an, and an alternative to Visual Studio uh, and an alternative to the Arduino IDE. All right, that's all done. Now what it's done here is it's put our code for Blink inside the source folder. So we just open that up. You can see here's Blink. Um, before I open that, as you can see, the platform io.ini describes what we told it about when we did the import. So it says it's using an Atmel AVR processor. The board is an Arduino Uno, so it knows it's a 328, um, 80 mega 328 uh, microcontroller, and we're using the Arduino framework. So let's open Blink IO. Anyway, here it is. So the first thing to do is to see if it will even compile. So again, at the bottom here now, we have some different menus. The bottom here, we've got a little house symbol next to it. We've got a tick, which is for building platform, the current platform IO application. So we'll just click that. And we get some feedback here about compiling. The very, very first time you compile something, it may take a little bit longer because it's pulling in libraries, but in this case, it didn't. Now, hopefully, this will also automatically detect what we have. So if we go back up here a second, we'll change this to. Um, a two second blink time. If I go back to the sketch just to remind, sorry, the card, you can see it's blinking with a 200 millisecond period between on and off. So we're going to change that just so we know it's working to be two seconds. So we'll go O, an extra O there, and an extra O there. All right, and we'll hit compile again. And that's done. Now this one next to it should allow us to upload. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to put the Arduino Uno back on the screen. So we'll see if it works. There we go. Yep, did it. And set the fuses, did everything. If I go back to the screen, um, scrolled up here a little bit, we can see it's um, recompiled it, got a hex file to upload, ready to accept instructions, that's talking to the programming in level interface, sending up the files, verifying the flash worked, um, setting the fuses, and we're done. So let's go back to the, oh, zoom in. Now you can see there, it's got a two second period now, so it's blinking much, much slower. So that's verified that we can indeed compile a Arduino sketch.
imported into Visual Studio Code under Platform I.O. and send it out to an Arduino using the Raspberry Pi 400, which is excellent. Now, the last thing I want to do, just because it will tie into some other videos that I'm going to be doing, is we'll download the files for the Elegoo robot car version 4 that I showed you in the last video. I want to be able to generate some tutorials working through the examples that are provided there, which I've had a quick scan through um, offline, and they seem to be much, much better than previous versions. So it looks like it's be something worthwhile showing you. Anyway, let's fire up our Chrome browser. I'm just using part of the screen just so that you can um, can zoom in and you can read everything a bit easier. So we're going to go to Alagoo. Just search for it first of all. DuckDuckGo is the default search engine. We'll go to elegoo.com. We'll go to download. And we want Arduino kits and robots, etc. Oh, robot kit. Click on the left hand side instead. Smart car 4 with camera. There we go. So we want to download the manual, tutorials, etc. etc. Well, click there. Takes us out to Google Drive. Um, you don't need to sign in or anything like that. You can download them individually if you want, but we're just going to say download all. It's going to zip it up and then it's going to download it to me. It'll take, it takes the site a few minutes to zip the file up. I don't know why they don't have a zip file already there. It would be nice. Okay, looks like the download has completed. And we've got a zip file here, so I'm just going to open it up. And I'm going to extract it to the same folder as the other thing. So we'll click on Extract Files, and we'll navigate to the... That'll take a moment. Okay, looks like it's done. So we'll close that folder. Okay, that was fun. What I found out is rather interesting. I've reset everything back to its defaults before I started trying to compile that uh, Elegoo Smart Car program and had those issues. Uh, did a bit of investigating and this is what I found. Um, under Windows, using the Arduino IDE, I could compile the program no problem. Had to add a couple of libraries that weren't in there by default and that's fine but I didn't get errors about not being able to find Arduino.h and things like that. Under the Arduino IDE for the Raspberry Pi, um, had a lot of issues with the Arduino IDE that was loaded by using um, apt install code, sorry, apt install Arduino. It ended up with a different version that was not the one that is current from the Arduino website. So what I did was I followed the instructions on the Arduino website, which is basically to download the zip file from Arduino directly. Um, if you go into the Chromium, and we go to Arduino software. Let's bring it onto screen. You can go down to Downloads, and we need the ARM 32-bit version, so you just click that, and then it'll connect, and it will, we'll just click Download for now, and it will download a tar.exe file. Once that completes, I'm just going to cancel it for the moment, because I already have it downloaded. Once that completes, there will be a folder in your Downloads directory called Arduino 1.8.13 Linux ARM TAR XE. Uh, if you double click that, it'll open up and you can extract it to wherever you want. I've extracted it already to my downloads folder. Sorry, brain fart for a moment. And if you look in this folder, you'll see that there is an install.sh. Go to a command line bring it up a terminal, go into this folder and run dot slash install dot sh. That will then do an install. It's going to give you a few errors. They're just warning so you can ignore them. I think um, there's been an ongoing issue about those warnings coming up when you run the 
um, Raspberry Pi installed at SH, or should I say Linux installed at SH, for quite a while, and it's not been fixed yet, but it does go in properly, and it does work after that. That will give you the very latest version of the Arduino IDE, which is the 1.18, sorry, 1.8.13, um, which is what we want, and that's the latest, whether it's for Windows or not as well. Um, there were no issues with the Visual Studio Code. I've actually got it loaded here right now, but I just want to wait, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, so let's open the Arduino IDE again. We get this little, I could probably set it up so it doesn't keep asking, but uh, do you want to execute it? Yep. Okay, so we get the ID up. I will just make it a little bit bigger. I did increase the font size so you could read it a little easier. So now if we open Arduino, the Elegoo Mars robot car, I, I left all the file names the same length and everything else. So we'll go into the main code main program. So there's quite a lot of directories here. And we'll open this application. Takes a moment. You can see it's all up here now. Before it was not opening and complaining about a lot of these file names. Um, now it is not. Let's just get rid of that one. Just bring this back up into the middle here. Now if we try and compile this, it is going to complain initially. Up some, some updates from my libraries. Let's have a look what it's saying. Uh, you may or may not get this. Depends on you know whether you've just freshly installed the Arduino IDE or not. I have, so I'm getting a couple of libraries to update. Let's see what it's asking me. Is library manager? Give it a second just to catch up. I'm going to change this to say updates. Okay, what's updatable? It's not finished figuring it out yet. Go wait for this. Uh, okay, servo. So yeah, we'll happily update that. Okay, done. Let's just took care of that. So when we try and run this, we just do a verify because I don't have the car hooked up anyway. Um, we're going to get some errors, right? And we're going to have to deal with those. Let me just move this up so we can see it. Well, first thing we've got is fastled.h. That's a library that's not included by the D with the default install of the Arduino IDE. So we will go to Sketch, include library, manage libraries. This is the easiest way of doing this, and the same as when you're doing it on Windows. So we get this pop up, wait for it to settle down, and you just type in here fast lad. So you got to type, and it will go off and see if there's a library available for fast lad, and there is. Just got to wait for it to find it right there. So we'll install that. We'll just take the latest one. Okay, that's done. So now if we just close that again and we just try and re-verify again, we may get another one. Okay. Nope, we didn't. Okay, so the only one we actually needed to install there for this time was fast lead. Now, I had made a couple of changes to this file. I thought I'd over I didn't re-download it. I must have overwritten it in the original folder. And that was here where it says hardware serial. That was a lowercase h. So let me just type on the right keyboard, put that back in there. And I think there was another one somewhere. That, uh, this one, Arduino, was a lowercase a. That was the original code. Now, if I try and compile that, it's going to give me errors. These are the ones we were seeing before, if you remember. So Arduino to H, no such file or directory. Now, if I do this on Windows, it will work just fine. But then Windows is not case sensitive. Linux is. Um, so if I actually change this to a lowercase on Windows and run it, it'll still find it. If I do it in uppercase, it'll still find it. It doesn't care. I'm surprised at this, um, but that's what it's doing. So if you get this kind of error on something that you're importing, just check the look for the file, Arduino to H or whatever the file is. Um, and try changing, you can either look for it and see if there are uppercase versions instead of lowercase, especially if you compile it on Windows and it worked and you try it on here and it doesn't work. So we'll put that back to an uppercase A. Both versions are in there. If you do a search globally for Arduino.h ignoring case, you will find four or five 
lowercase a's and four or five with uppercase a's. And these are different libraries for different processors, uh, microcontrollers that people have added over the years. Um, but they're not always stuck to the same case. So it's a little gotcha for beginners, I'm guessing. Uh, caught me by surprise as I hadn't dealt with this for quite a while. Um, having run mostly on Windows, it doesn't particularly care. Um, but that will fix it. All right, we'll go back to here and we'll change the H to the uppercase H hardware. And we'll compile it again. And we get a bunch of warnings here. But as you can see, it compiled OK. Now, if I just run this again, one of the features of the Arduino IDE is the first time you compile it, it will give you the warnings about um, you know, using Boolean versus bool and things like that, right? Um, initialized argument is, uh, what's it complaining about there? Invalid conversion from const car to uint 8t, etc. Right? These are mostly warnings. It's still the program is still going to run. And if I just compile this again, you'll see it won't even give me any complaints because they were just warnings, not critical errors. All right. So that's started compiling. Now, what do we do with Visual Studio Code? So now we know this is all going to compile. So we've effectively brought um, a program that was compiling OK under Windows. We had to add FastLED to it, but that was pretty much it. Uh, there might have been another one, but a servo maybe. Um, so we'll just close this. And we'll now do the import under Visual Studio Code. Yeah, just to prove to the point, what I'll do is I'll um, go back to the download folder. I think I still have it in here. Yeah. I'm going to expand this back out and overwrite the code that was in the Arduino folder. So I'm just going to delete this because we just modified it. So let's delete it, move it to the trash, and we'll go back to where we were. And we'll expand this into that folder. That way we know it's going to be um, exactly what we want. So we're going to put it into downloads. No, we're going to put it into Arduino. So we're going to put it into this folder. So we'll just say open. And we'll let that extract into there. That will take a moment. Okay, that's unzipped. So we'll just close this. Close this. And we will import a project with none of the fixes in it. So we'll import Arduino project, um, pick the board, Uno, uh, it's an Arduino Uno, you know, folder. Okay, we're in the right folder because there's the INO file, we'll import that. And that's import. If you remember, we did an import before, it took a little longer, but now that you've done it the first time, a lot of the stuff for it's there. So under source, we'll find is all our code and we'll find that this these two files here the application function set these are the two that were giving us the errors and you can see the default for hardware here is lowercase and in here the Arduino is defaulting to lowercase so these are going to fail right, in fact it's telling me here all right, I bet you, in, well, that may not fail, but there's an error in that one as well. Anyway, without doing anything, let's just compile it and see what errors it gives us. And then we'll fix those. All right, so it's going to complain. First of all, it didn't go anywhere because it couldn't find FastLED. All right, because that's not been included. We did include it into the Arduino IDE, but not in this. I told it not to pull the Arduino. Um, libraries. So you can go in here. Sorry, it's already open here. And we go to libraries. And we can type in fast lead. Search for it. And there it is. So we just click on it. We'll say add to project and it's going to want to know what project we're going to add it to. There's only one project in there. So we pick we didn't give it a name when we loaded it. We just let it use the default name. All right, so we've added that to the library. We've, sorry, we've told it what project to add it to. So we say add. Now this is going to make a modification to the 
platformio.ini. If I go find that uh, up here, platformio.ini, you see what it's done is it's just put in this statement, fastlad, which tells the compiler to pull in this library when it needs it. So we'll try compiling again. Now see what happens. So it's pulled in fastlad right here. Now it's complaining about something else. All right, it's complaining about can't find hardware serial. Remember what I said about case sensitivity. So if we go into the file it's complaining about, one of the nice things here is um, you can click on, click it, and it'll open it up to where that error is. So you can see here's the lowercase h. So we're going to go in there, we'll change that to a uppercase h, and we'll hit compile again. I mean, I know I'm repeat repeating the compiling things, but we want to, I want to show you, we do get continuing case. Now it's going to complain about Arduino.h this time as well. And servo, there you go. So I told you servo was going to give an issue. Probably given that issue first. So we're going to go back up to libraries. We'll search for servo. And we found it. We just click in there. We're going to add it to a project. Okay. We're going to select the project. Uh, it's that one. And we're just going to say add. And that's done. Now, if you look at what happened there, all it did was make another entry into platformio.ini. There you go. Okay. So that's done. Let's compile that again. Because you don't always get all of the errors right away when you compile something. It probably will complain about Arduino.ini. Uh, sorry, Arduino.h this time. These are warnings. Yeah, there we go. Looking for Arduino.h dependency. Can't find it. All right, same type of error. So we'll click in there. There it is. It's got the lowercase a. Now I took the time and searched all the way through the folder structure to find out why this was happening and did a bit of research. It took me a few hours and I finally twigged on the fact it was simply a case sensitivity thing because of going from Windows to Linux. Yeah, who'd have thought? Okay, so Arduino to H is done. Let's just hit compile again. Um, because it compiles so quickly, it's really not a big deal to hit compile. So you can see there's a few yellow errors throwing up, same as we've got under the Arduino IDE. But now we're here and actually now we've got full success. So there you go some very minor issues. Um, if you're not used to it, and I hadn't come across that kind of error for a long time, so I didn't expect to see it, uh, especially when seeing as I was using the same Arduino IDE or I was using the same um, Visual Studio Code and Platform IO, because it's running under Java and things, okay? Uh, I didn't expect to be seeing those case sensitivities showing up. Should have known better, because, you know, I program in C-sharp and C++, and obviously everything there is case-sensitive. But that's one of the reasons why I would have expected to see those errors under Windows as well. But I went into the Windows IDE on my other computer, and I deliberately um, changed the lowercase to an uppercase and back again and things like that, and it didn't care. It found the file, it pulled it in, and it included it anyway and compiled. So, yeah. Note to self and note to beginners and even seasoned professionals. Case sensitivity, especially when you're shifting from one platform like Windows to a Linux platform, doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi, could bite you. Anyway, now we've got that successfully compiled. We already showed you earlier in the video that you can now just, you could just hit upload. I could probably hit upload actually. <coughs> if I switch to the um, view with the Arduino. There's nothing else connected to it, but there's absolutely no reason why, because it's the same Arduino, same chip and everything, why it shouldn't upload. So in here, with even with this great big program, we'll click on Upload. It's going to recompile. It won't take a moment. There's nothing changed. Compiling. And now we'll see the lights flickering. And it's uploading. It's writing to it. And it's verifying. And done. So, perfect. All right, that wraps up the video for this. Um, it was all about the Raspberry Pi 400 and getting the Arduino IDE and the V2 
Visual Studio Code with Platform IO up and running on it and demonstrating a couple of issues you may have come across when you move from a Windows programming environment with the exact same applications, even the same versions, to the Linux based versions and what can bite you. So there may be other things that we discover going forward, but for now, that's pretty much it. And um, yeah, so now that I've got this going and I've understood a few of the issues that may crop up as we go through demos and things, I will try and use this computer with, you know, I'm going to have a look at some of what's in here as well. I'll do that offline and then cherry pick some things. Um, but anyway, we'll try and do some programming on here instead of a more expensive Windows PC because this is, you know, it's sub $200 to get one of these up and running and, you know, a low cost monitor. Um, by the time you get uh, the Raspberry Pi 400 and the Elugu car, you're probably still talking under a couple of hundred dollars to get going. And it's very capable. I mean, that compiled that pretty quickly. Um, I will try compiling the... Actually, why don't I do that? I'm going to do that real quickly right now. I'm going to down... I'm not going to video everything, except I will come back to the video when I've got it ready to compile. I'm going to download the Marlin IDE. Sorry, the Marlin firmware for a um, 3D printer. And we'll see how long it actually takes to compile on here. It's fairly quick on my other machine, my Windows machine, but that's a very powerful machine. This one is under Linux, so it makes it faster anyway, but it's, you know, constrained hardware and everything. So let me get that down and ready, and I'll come back to you. And I don't have that on screen, do I? There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so I downloaded it from the Marlin website, marlinfilmware.org, downloaded the zip file. I opened the zip file and extracted it to my Arduino folder. I won't show you that again. It's pretty straightforward. And now I've just opened the... Let me just close this and just show you at this bit again at least. So we've got the platform I.O. And it comes up. There we go. So we'll go into here. We'll go open. We open a project this time because we know there's already a platform io.ini file in with Marlin. We go to Pi Arduino. Marlin. And when you find the folder that's got platformio.ini in it, which is right here, that's the one you want to open. So we click open. And that's all there. Now, it defaults to the AT Mega 2560, um, etc., etc. No, it's just opening some extra things here. Just close that off. And the one thing we could do now as well is, and it, it'll just save some. Uh, usually, when you're compiling Marlin, you would be editing the platform io.ini file, and there's, it's a very big and complicated file. I mean, ultimately, most times you're just able to modify this, but you'd also have to modify files inside um, the config, inside the source as well in Marlin, the configuration. Advanced and configuration.h. I'm not going to go into all of that right now. I'm just going to accept the defaults that are there. But we will just try this Marlin um, routine that will look at those files, pick the right configuration automatically, and then compile it. So what you do with this is you hit the M down here. You then go up here and you find the hammer and you hit the hammer and that will actually compile it. So it brings up this. And it wants me, now there's two specific builds because they are possible here, I guess. Um, it recognizes it's Marlin 2072. It recognizes that I'm using a Ramps 14 EFB. It recognizes I'm using one of these two processors, AT Mega 1280 or 2560. So you've got, it's telling you to pick which one you're using. So we're going to pick the Mega 2560 and we'll just click build. And we'll see if it compiles with no errors and how long I won't speed up this bit normally this would compile with no errors if you were doing it on Windows um, because the default download is fully compilable just so that you can verify that you've got all the files correctly and that everything else is set up and then you start tweaking it to be your own for your own board um, 
your own size 3D printer, et cetera, et cetera. But by default, it should compile. So if this compiles, that'll be great news. Of course, it's not going to be as fast as Windows. Sorry, it's not going to be as fast as my 8-core i7 Windows. So far, so good. No warnings, no errors. Oh, now it's doing a firmware.elf, which means it worked. So there we go. Pull down Marlin fresh. Open it up in here, and we compiled it, and we compiled it with no problems whatsoever. The nice thing is that when you've done this, you can actually click upload and upload it to an 18 mega 2560 right here. Same as we were doing for the Arduino Uno, you can do that for that as well. Other processes, you have to do different techniques beyond the scope of this video. Right, now we are done. So I'm going to close this video off. I'm not going to show anything more. I think I've demonstrated enough for the Pi 400. Uh, bing, bing. So if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, don't. And I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.